Welcome back. Mm-hmm. Hello, everyone. Good to be with you, Marita. Hello, Angel. So what are we talking about today? Mm, we are continuing to explore this idea of individual and connection and community, but it's really about healing and connection. In indigenous thought and way, there's really not, there's nothing other than being connected. There's division is that which is outside that that is not you because we're formed to be in connection with everything. And so whether it's the idea of healing in community versus as an individual, whether it's that famous word out there that people like to use, core cutting, the West does not hold a place where a being can be whole. Mm. It does not allow uh, a place for true healing where without disconnection. And so today we're talking about what does it mean to be connected? What does it really mean to heal in community and heal in creating that connection, right? And how can we start to slowly untangle the myths and the programming of that continuous division and forcefulness and warlike behavior that colonization in the West is the whole framework of a lot of the what's happening on the globe right now. Mm. So let's dive into this very big topic again and uh, let's see where we arrive. Hmm. One of the things that is so difficult to truly embody and experience at every level of our being is that we are all related, that we are all family. I think that's something that we often struggle with. I mean, many people say it, but how do we live that when we are confronted with something that feels very foreign, maybe to our way of being, to our way of seeing the world, to our way of thinking. And that often leads to healing being separation, exclusion. You know, we somehow believe that, well, let's exclude this. <laughs> let's get this on the other side of the border or outside of the wall or other outside of my community. Let's create pain over there to prevent pain to come in here. Or let's do, you know, a little bit to the other what has been done to us, right? Thinking that it's really just done to the others, but in fact, we are keep hurting ourselves. Mm-hmm. My teacher one time told me, say, you know, one of the things that's very easy is to love your dog. That doesn't require a lot of skills. What require more skills is how do you find your way back to love, your way back to connection when you don't know how to love that person? when you find it extremely difficult to connect. And yes, there can be moments where separation is needed and abusive situation, where there is violence and, you know, where we need to extract ourselves from a group or we, someone needs to be, you know, separated from that. But from a, an ancient perspective, this is just step one. We isolate, then we heal, and then we reconnect. Mm-hmm. It was very well known in Native American communities and when some tribes will go at war with others over territory or food resources and the warriors will go and come back. And that's also something that is done in the jungle is that when the warriors come back because they have experienced trauma and pain and violence, they will be isolated from the group as they return goes through the process of healing and releasing their anger and their pain and their grief, returning back to their humanity and connection. 
and then they will be brought back into the community. So that would be a tent, a teepee for them, for that process to happen because they would carry the anger into the community. It was understood that because we're all connected, because there is no separation, that we just bring them back in. Those seeds of violence and pain would spread. Mm -hmm. And I often think of that when we think, you know, of um, the United States that has been pretty much at war since its inception, that has gone through, you know, slavery and many other violent episodes like the genocides of Native Americans. And there was never really a true healing process and therefore the seeds of violence and separations are very spread. Mm -hmm. into every family that those wounded warriors have come back or those you know slave owners were in and just all of that is part of the collective it doesn't matter if we are it's in my family or yours or someone else it's in the system but we often mm -hmm. do that even on the more you know modern healing cycle circles sorry where there is certain behavior, like you said, like you cannot be entirely yourself. There is an expectation, once again, of conformity, a certain different kind of conformity. It looks different maybe than the Western world, but there is certain expectation there to mold into something instead of let's cut the behavior, let's heal the behavior, let's heal the pain that is there with the aim to ultimately connect. And if that healing process doesn't bring us back together, this is not healing. Mm -hmm. The earth always come back in homeostasis. You know, we just had this huge storm and there is huge devastation, huge devastation. But the earth already, it's only in a few days, is already going back and rebuilding and repairing. How do we do that with our communities? How do we do that with each other when we are going through pain and difficulty with each other? How do we hold? And that's what my teacher was saying. You need to hold like for your dog. You need to hold that forgiveness and that love the way he does it. It will always come back to love to you. It will know how to return to that. And they are a great teacher in that aspect, in that respect. <laughs> yes, they are. You know, I think hmm. thank you, ancestors. My observation and the observation of, of many indigenous elders of of and Buddhist elders, right? Of of people outside of Western society. Because we do exist. <laughs> There's a lot of other ways in societies that do not operate like the United States, do not operate uh, like first world nations or even first world nations that operate differently than the United States and have amazing health care <laughs> and other things. And so, again, I want to bring in possibility. There's no one way. And I think it's so important to, to state that because part of the programming out there that is so powerful is that there's one way, one truth, one leader. And they think that uni unifying under that umbrella, right, means that we're moving forward, that we're together, we're a community and everything outside of us doesn't matter and it's wrong and it's bad. But here again, diversity and earth is here to teach us about that diversity. And one of the 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 lies of of unification sometimes is that we have these conditions of what that means. And many of those conditions don't really take into account the capacity and the capabilities of humans being humans. Mm. And we create these ideas of good and bad. And even that is disconnecting us from our potential, <laughs> our potential to do beautiful things of connection and our potential to do 
horrific things of disconnection. That is what a human is, right? That is an interesting evolutionary process that we're in of consciousness, of consciously connecting and disconnecting, of choosing many times disconnection versus connection because of a lie that we're better than other species, that we're more important than other people, all of that. Mm. And another thing that is, is so important, right, that other traditions hold or speak about it in a better way is that of emotions right yes we are emotional beings all sentient beings all beings on this planet express emotions whether it be dogs cats mice birds clouds trees they are all expressing that which moves them but even the cloud people understand that that which moves them changes and that it shapes for just a second and then it returns. And if we had that in or allowed that in our nature, that we are not our emotions, then we wouldn't condemn people or create division saying this is who you are this is your one way and i say that because as modern science is catching up when emotions are not processed right they create disease dissonance within the body and angel you, you that imagery is, is so powerful of of warriors coming back, knowing that they carried disconnection. Disconnection is a disease, mm. right? Because we're meant to be in connection. And to go to war is such a horrific thing, right? And all a lot of beings go to war, right? I mean, look at what's happening to the ant population right now. But you're asking someone to be disconnected. And so to bring them back is to bring them back into that balance of connection. Knowing that that emotions that they experienced of being disconnected is so, it destroys the psyche, right? And influences the body. Yet so many times we have modern ways of disconnection because of an emotion. We can't, as the Buddha say, you know, you know, emotions, it's just, it's just part of it. <laughs> it's just part of life. It's just energy. Why are we making a cloud not change? Why are we saying, oh, but that person was like that and that cloud's like that? No, the cloud people teach us this every day. Thank you, wind. Thank you, cloud people. That we are supposed to forever, at every millisecond of the day, be shifting. And that the shift is part of how we are able to experience life. Yet modern world wants us to be stagnant, to be defined, and to be disconnected. And to be defined by an energy, a situation, right? We all get angry. That doesn't mean you are anger. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. We're defining people by emotions, by their behaviors without being allowed to, you know, as we were talking earlier, look at the environment that is holding that. If the environment is full of abuse and war and disconnection, that is the environment that needs healing. All must sit together to be brave enough to take the time enough to face the grief of disconnection. Mm. You know, again, here we have, I've been sitting with uh, Kumukavika of uh, Molokai, and uh, here's a, another form of disconnection of taking indigenous teachings and cutting them away from the root, and that's Ho'oponopono. 
It's not supposed to be a phrase that you say. It is a process that can take days. <laughs> and in that process of creating connection, again, they will stop at any point that people do not want to be connected because it can't move on. Mm. If you do not want to heal, if you do not want to forgive yourself and others, there can be no connection. And so in this world that we're living in, as we're talking through this process of healing in community, I hope that we can be brave enough not to burn bridges, cut cords under this pretense of who we think someone is, if it's just an energy floating like a cloud in a wounded landscape of planet earth yeah and i will uh, weave onto that that if the landscape is wounded or if that person is wounded in that moment the thing they need the most is connection and not disconnection mm -hmm. and i can take incredible humbleness and resources to be able to return to that to be able to not paint them a certain way to allow them to be fluid to be changing but not to define them because of their pain like we doing to each other so often right it's so easy to be caught in that story uh, and to always stick a little bit more deeply the way back that is the healing place where not just we're going to recreate that connection with each other but we're going to heal each other mm -hmm. that's the true place of healing ultimately the pain of separation visible or invisible is going to be the most damaging of mm -hmm. all and that's can be a hard pill to swallow sometimes <laughs> yeah but it's a necessity that's even more necessary today if we want to go through this great turning, this time of prophecy we're in. Uh, that's the only way we're going to save ourselves from ourselves. Mm. Yes. May we get the help to do so mm. from each other. May we keep returning to that goal, you know. Because she's calling, and we're calling each other. We just don't always hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>